very disappointed, nothing to give away. And sure enough, these two suitcases turn up, bulging with toys, they open them up, and they're like, well, that's it, we're doing a Christmas party. <laughs> so they did, and every kid got a present. We got some, we did get some videos, some well, pictures at some point. Every kid got a present, every, the suitcases were just awesome. Yeah, I think there's a video on our YouTube stuff for that. It was just such an amazing connection that God put all these people in place, and the connection for that is going to go even further because we've got the connection with the Brazilian mining company now. They want to come and see the project. They want to come to Shingu and uh, to Marabá and see what we're doing. And then, oh yeah, we'll get to look at that. <laughs> so that's another connection that uh, things that happened while we were back. Another one is that uh, before Jen and I left the first time, we went and spoke at this little Portuguese slash Brazilian church. Um, so. We, there was a connection, we spoke at um, Emmanuel Bible College, yeah. and this guy came up to us and said, I'm a... Hmm? Okay. <laughs> so this guy comes up and says, I, I'm, I, we speak at this place, and he comes up to us and says, I, you know, I have this church, and he says it's a Brazilian speaking, uh, Portuguese speaking church, would you want to come and talk? So we come and talk, make a connection there, and so we start to build a relationship. We came back this time, and uh, we connected with them again. They said, do you want to come speak again? So we go and speak. This time they're in a different location in Preston. And uh, he says to us, oh, I'm really sorry about this church. It's kind of, you know, we're just here temporarily. We've got a lease that runs out soon. We're looking for somewhere else to go. So we're like, well, we know someone you might be able to use. So Jen, on the spot, emails Scott. And Scott replied almost instantly, saying, yeah, sure, we'll pick up a meeting. We'll start talking to them. So, Short story is now on a, after our service on a Sunday afternoon, the Rock, the Rock, didn't we? the Rock uh, Brazilian Church now meets in our auditorium. So, and the connection there is just it's just continued to grow, and the, and the relationship between the two churches is just it seems to be flourishing. It seems to be pretty amazing. Makes sense since they're Brazilian. Um, so, and then the last one of the last points of um, just the stuff that's happened while we've been here. Um, as most of you know, I just had my gallbladder out a couple weeks ago, um, and that, you know, being able to be here for that instead of having that happen in Brazil is kind of a load off, because A, it would have cost us money to get it done down there, and B, you know, having surgery in a country where you don't speak the language very well yet is a little overwhelming. Um, and it's also just given us the time if I hadn't had to have my gallbladder out, I would have been feeling very pressured to get on a plane and get back to Brazil, and I don't think emotionally I would have been ready for that. Um, but now I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling very ready. It helps that it's really cold and snowy. But <laughs> um, but I am, I am feeling like, okay, we're ready to move, to move forward. So um, it's just, God's in all the details. He's just been, he's blown us away, really, with his um, provision and, um, blessing and just we just know he's been woven into the fabric of this whole crazy year so so while we've been back here obviously things have been happening and carrying on uh, in Malabar in Brazil unfortunately some of it not so good um, so it, just to again to give people an idea of the kind of area that we're living in and the neighborhood that, the, that, we, that we're working um, there have been three incidents I'm going to tell you about that have happened since we've been away there was a guy, uh, Paolo, who, um, he liked to drink a lot. I think they have a picture. Very friendly guy. Um, so he did like to drink a lot and partake in other things that weren't necessarily healthy. Um, but every week, or most weeks, he would come to church. He would come drunk, but by the end of church, he would be at the front, on his knees, crying out to God. Um, and he also, he was, he was the guy that loved bringing all the other guys in. That were, that were drunk and stoned. And, but they loved, they loved to come. But Paolo every week would come, and every week he would come up to me and try and talk to me. And first of all, he speaks Portuguese, which I speak about that much. Um, second, he has about three teeth, and he was usually drunk. So I couldn't understand a single word, and he would talk to me, and he'd get angry at me because I couldn't understand him, and then he'd talk to somebody, why can't I understand? So every week we had this ongoing, frustrating conversation. Uh, <laughs> So, unfortunately, uh, since we've been back, we had the sad news that Paolo actually got shot and killed. Um, again, he was involved in some rather uh, rough areas in his life. Um, so this was actually, looks like a retaliation or, a, or a, he'd done something to upset somebody. So it was, he was uh, 
basically chased down. He was shot once, and then he went down, and then she went up and just shot him in the back of the head and killed him. Um, so it's very sad that he won't be around, but he's definitely left a legacy for all the other guys that he bought. He continued to bring in, and they continue to come back. And uh, we're really hoping sooner they'll come in and not be drunk. <laughs> we're working on it. Um, another guy, there's a guy called uh, Ian, and uh, he's done a he's a construction guy. So he's done a ton of construction on the property. He's one of the guys that we hire from the neighbourhood to come in. Um, he's just a little guy, but unfortunately, in a picture, he's just this little guy, and he's kind of wiry, but he's as strong as anything, and he's super skilled. He can lay bricks quicker than anybody I've seen. Um, two of his sons actually do help out of the church, and, and one of them still comes to the church on a regular basis. Um, again, he's involved in some brother dodgy areas. If something goes missing or is stolen, we check with him because he can usually find out where it's gone. Um, so again, he's involved with some not very nice people, and uh, we found out recently that he was shot. Now, he survived. He was shot four times. His dog actually saved his life because his dog came up and started biting the guy that was, that was trying to shoot him. And the guy only had two bullets left and he used them on the dog. And then he ran. So he was in hospital last we heard, but he was okay. He was going to survive. Unfortunately, he's going to have to leave the area because of the situation. Um, but he, again, he's been an ongoing presence at the church. He's a, he's a tough one to get to actually come to a service. But he's, he's always around. He's always very friendly. Rick, the... the uh, Rick Bergen is a really close friend with him. He, he, he really sort of talks to him and, and speaks into his life a lot. And unfortunately, another one is we have uh, Alini. I think we've got a picture of her family up there. Alini's on the far left there. She's the youth pastor of the church, basically. Um, youth pastor slash assistant for organizing pretty much everything. She's amazing. She's just such a, such a cool person. And her brother... Oh yeah, she just recently got married in... September to the worship uh, pastor of the church. So they're, they're an awesome couple. They're, they've been such a huge uh, example and sort of for the kids in our neighborhood to look up to for, for how to, the right way of doing things. They've been they're just, just amazing inspiration. Now, her brother, who's the second guy from the right there, um, the tall guy, about the only guy in the picture. Yeah. Um, he unfortunately took a different path in life. Um, he's been in and out of prison a few times, um, but he was starting to come to the church, he'd been taking the English class, and he'd been like, making lots of connections in the area, so his life was starting to turn around, but he was still connected with some guys that were involved in some drugs and gangs and stuff, so there was an incident, uh, and unfortunately, um, out of a group of him and three friends, two of them were shot and two of them were arrested. So this was by the police, the police came in, and we don't know exactly what the details are, but unfortunately he was shot and killed as well. So that's the kind of neighborhood, that's where we live. Now, the flip side of that is we never feel unsafe in that neighborhood. I can, we can walk out in the streets in the middle of the night and we just get such favor between the people and just God just blesses us there that we never feel that kind of, we never feel unsafe or any kind of real danger. But the kids that we're working with, and the, this is the environment they grow up in, in gangs and drugs, a lot of their family members are involved in this. So this is what they're growing up into and being told and, and seeing is the norm for their life. That this is what you move into. So one of the big things we're doing is we're trying to give them an alternative. Trying to show them there's a different path they can take. And so that's a, a huge influence we're trying to have on their lives. Is, is just trying to pull them away from the drugs, the alcohol, the gangs. And just to show them there's something else. And to show them that how much God loves them and how much we love them. So that's... You know, if you want our primary goal down there amongst all the other stuff we do, that's that's our primary goal, is to show them that there is an alternative to this life. One of the ways to do that is uh, Alpha. Phil and I both took Alpha, um, low of those 12 years ago, um, and that is what brought us to the Lord. And it's really cool to see that God is now using Alpha um, in Brazil. The Shingo Mission hadn't used Alpha before we came. We started the first Alpha course um, just about five weeks before we left. And they've since run, um, they finished that one and have run another one. Um, and it's having a huge impact. The pastor, Ibn Alu, says that it is by far the best tool the church has used so far. They're, he's very excited about it. Um, and it's bringing in lots of new people, lots of new adults. Because the church primarily was youth when we went there about four years ago to visit it. 
Um, so one of the things we would really like to do is start taking, there is a uh, YouTube video, Chris, if you could cue that. There just, there's a testimony from one of the guys that took uh, Alpha. But what we see happening is um, taking Alpha to the other bases. There's a base in Altamira, there's a new base in Pacaja, um, they're going to be starting a new base in Portel, and uh, we see really taking that into the other bases and training them, because this is something they can take into the river communities, they can read instead of showing the videos. Um, yeah, if you can, if you can play the, um, the testimony, this is one of the guys that has taken Alpha, this is just his testimony.